Hello everybody and welcome to Wild Ginger Running's Trail Chat. Oh no, Gear Chat. Welcome to Wild Ginger Running's Gear Chat. Tonight I am going to be telling you about three different shoes. First of all we've got the Innovate Rocklight 275 with graphene grip. Then I'm going to be talking about the Salomon Speed Cross 5. Then, quite excitingly because I've not worn a Raid Light shoe before, the Raid Light Responsive the Raid Light, sorry, shall I just start the show again? The Raid Light Revolutive. It's a bit confusing, they've got nearly the same name. The Raid Light Revolutive. So I'm going to be talking about those three shoes. But first of all, I just wanted to know, um, a lot of my, peop the, my friends in my running club are doing the London Marathon on the weekend. And I just wondered if anybody else is doing the London Marathon. Have we, I know we're more like trail and ultra running community here, but I just wondered if anybody is doing the London Marathon. Because if you are, then um, put your name in the, in the comments below um, and I'll look out for you on Sunday because I'm going to watch it on the TV and I'll track you as well. So hopefully I can see how you're getting on. So just before I get started with the reviews of these three shoes here, the Innovate, the Salomon and the Raid Light, I just wanted to let you know about the super duper competition that I've got for April. Um, so uh, the competition I've got sorted for this month is uh, three orange mud backpacks. So there's this hydration double barrel here which is just uh, for uh, carrying a lot of water, just here. I've reviewed these elsewhere on my channel, so if you Google um, wild ginger running orange mud, then it'll come up with my reviews. So this is the double barrel, the Hydra double barrel, so that is up for grabs for the competition. And um, then there's the, um, the Endurance 4 litre pack, um, which is fantastic. Front and back there. And then we have the Endurance 12 litre pack. So this is a really uh, much larger rucksack. I really enjoyed wearing this um, and it's great for longer runs. So you could win all three of these packs. You could also win this rather snazzy um, Trails Are There To Be Explored cap by Insane Inside. So I will just model it here for you so you can see how cool it looks. So there we go. If you want to be in with a chance of winning this rather cool cap, then um, enter the competition. And then finally, uh, this needs to pop up on the screen, so I'll just do that now. You'll win tickets for you and a friend to uh, go to one of the Salomon Trail Running Festivals this year. There's one in Box Hill on the 8th of June, and there's also uh, one a little bit earlier um, in on the 18th of May in Edinburgh and the 1st of June in the Peak District. So you'll be in a, with a chance of to win um, entry to those uh, festivals as well. So to do that, you have to sign up to follow me on Patreon. So if you go on www.patreon slash wildgingerrunning, if you sign up for the $5 tier, then you'll be in, a in with a chance to win um, those items in the competition every month. And I usually do a second prize and a third prize as well. So um, I'll pick three names out of the hat next week and I will be um, sending probably just a little something to the second and third prize winners, but the first prize winner will win those three endurance, um, three um, amazing running packs from Orange Mud and also the hat and the entry to the Salmon Trails festivals, running festivals as well. So um, everybody's saying hi, just going to read out a few hellos. Um, Merlin Keating saying uh, nice, nice to see you again. Did I enjoy my trip to Cornwall? Yes, I did enjoy my trip to Cornwall. It's absolutely amazing. I really loved it. I can't wait to go back there on the 27th to the 29th of September because I'm going to be at the Southwest um, National Trust Outdoor Festival. So that's going to be really cool. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Bram Van Diemen says, good evening, Claire. Now, I'm quite excited about what Bram Van Diemen has to say because he has already been testing this revolutive shoe out. So hopefully he's going to come up in the comments and, and answer any questions as well. And um, he says hi to everyone else as well. Sally Gilson's here. Hi, Sally. Good evening to you. Um, Mike McCallan says he's marshalling on the finish line of the London Marathon so that's cool Sally Gilson's gonna watch it as well Sean Lockhart's doing Sterling Half Marathon ah good luck in that Sean that's cool um, Sally Gilson's also gonna be supporting um, we've got hellos from Dublin here as well um, and uh, 
lots of questions coming in already about the shoes. So I better start um, running, um, reviewing these shoes now. John Gardner says hello as well. Hello, John. Tob says hi as well. Absolutely fantastic to see you all here tonight. So let us get started with the shoe reviews tonight. Okay. So the first one that I've been testing um, is the Innovate. So it's the it's the Innovate Rocklight 275. And it's the new one with the graphene grip. So I have actually got the older version of the Innovate Rock Light shoe. This is the 280 and I haven't actually got one because I wore mine out. So this is my husband's pair. So that's why they're a little bit different in size. Just a tad, tad different there. So um, first things first, the Rock Light 275 is it retails for £130, um, but I found it on Amazon for £117. You can see Amazon links in the uh, film description below this film when we're done. Um, and you can, might be able to see them now, actually. Um, and But I've also seen the older version of this for about 60 quid to 90 quid online. Um, about 60 quid, they're usually in very funny sizes. Um, but around the 90 quid mark, you could get a pair of the older version of these, um, uh, which... Um, so I'll leave it up to you which, which ones you prefer. Some people like to go new, some people like the older versions. So I'll be telling you about the differences between them as well. Um, so these shoes, um, they weigh 163 grams each, which is, is light. It's a really nice light shoe. Um, so that's 526 grams for the pair. Um, they've got an eight millimeter drop and that's signified by the two little arrows there that you can see there. And um, I'm just gonna tell you a bit about the fit and then the grip and then the drop and the weight and the uppers um, and we'll go through it like that for each shoe but feel free to have questions coming on each shoe um, as we get into it so that um, so that you just feel like we've really gotten into the shoes here. So let's start with the fit first of all. So this is really a really useful thing to know is the sizing. So I order all my shoes in a size six from each brand unless I know that that brand's shoe is slightly big or small on me. So in Innovates, I'm usually a size six, but strangely in some of their shoes, I'm a, a, like a size five and a half. In the Rock Lights, I would say that I'm a five and a half in a rock light. So if you usually go for a six, maybe take a half size off in the in the Innovate Rock Light 275s because I found this shoe, it fitted um, it fitted well, but it felt big and my toe came to about just here. So if I was in a shop, if I wasn't getting them sent to me for a gear test, I'd definitely want to try the half size smaller on these. So that's something to definitely note there. Um, so the feel is, um, it's, it's quite, uh, it doesn't, the shoe, Innovate like to go for a natural foot strike. So they don't like to add a load of things into the shoe. You won't find a big arch in here. It's relatively just flat inside the shoe. Um, you, you don't feel especially kind of supported on either side. It's very neutral feel to it. And the cushioning um, is, uh, it's, it's not like bouncy like a road running trainer or anything. It just, there's enough cushioning there for running on nice, uh, on a mix of terrains really. You could, um, they'll suit running on soft, nice grassy terrain um, really, really well. Um, and they, um, they will also um, suit running on, on road sections. But if you knew that you were gonna run, say, the London Marathon, you wouldn't be running in these. You'd be running in much pad, much more padded shoe. So these are really good for a mix of terrains. Um, and the grip is their graphene grip. So it's the thing with that is that's supposed to be 50% stronger and 50% more durable. So I'm not gonna be able to tell you about how long it lasts until probably a year or so's time. But if I hold these up to the light there, you can just see, you can still see all the little prickles on the grip still. So that bodes well, I think. And I'll, I've taken a, a close up as well of the Innovate Rock Light shoe. So you can see that the, the, little, the little kind of bobbles on each grip are still there. So um, so yeah, so we've got a really good question here about the grip from Rebecca Nisbet coming up. So she says, are the, are the shoes grippy enough for really muddy, soft grounded mush trails? Like what would the muddiest level of trail be that I would use these for? Now that is a really good question. 
Um, and I'm just going to show you a picture of the sole of these ones compared to the old ones as well. Um, the old ones have obviously run smooth, but they used to have the little bubbles on the end of the grips as well. Um, so that's just, they've, they've changed the sole quite a bit there. They've, they've done away with the metatarsal um, uh, sort of lines there. And they've just gone for the, the nice big, bigger cleats and sort of more um, angular cleats as well. So um, that is a really good question from Rebecca. So I would use these for mixed terrain. So if I knew that I was going for a really, really muddy trail run, like in the middle of the mountains with tussocks and bog everywhere and not really a chance of loads and loads of rock or loads and loads of road or hard packed trails, then for those kind of runs, I'd go for the, the really griffy um, Mudclaw 260, um, also in the gra graphene uh, grip, which you can see elsewhere on my channel. If you basically, if you Google um, uh, Innovate Mud Claw 260 then, um, and Wild Ginger, then it will come up with my review. So these grips are, they are remarkably good on most surfaces. Um, so I would recommend these shoes if you're going for a mix of like there's a road section and then there's like um, some gravel paths and then there's a rocky bit and then there's a trail and paths and then there's some mud, out and out mud and bog. These do really well for a mix of everything. If you know that you're only going to be heading into absolute bog then go for those ones with the huge studs on for sure but these are a great mix and um, I would advise getting a pair of these for any beginner trail runners because they're just such a good all-rounder um, that I would also advise um, the other two here as well uh, but we'll get on to why those might be different for different people um, uh, a little bit later on into the review so um, that uh, that was your question Rebecca I hope that was I hope that answered that well. Um, I'm just scanning through to see if there's any other questions on the grip just whilst we're here. Um, Carol J says she got the new rock lights for her birthday, already done lots of miles in them, so interested in the review. Oh, that's brilliant. So just um, add to this, add to this then, Carol. Um, and other people looking forward to the raid light reviews. That's great. Um, Carol uh, agrees on the sizing, so that's handy to know. She's usually a five. She had to go for a 4.5 in these. So definitely everybody consider a half size smaller when you're buying the Innovate Rock Light 275. Um, Carol J also agrees on the cushioning too. Me and Carol are like twins on this review. This is brilliant. You should come, Carol. You could sit in for me while I'm on holiday. So she agrees as well on the cushioning. It's more comfy on softer terrain. Yes, I definitely, yeah. She says she feels a bit flat-footed by the end of back-to-back -back hard runs. Um, yeah, I would totally agree with that. Like, if I if I knew I was going to spend a lot of time on roads, I'd go for a more cushioned shoe. But for fell, fell running and trail running on nice, soft and uneven terrain, this shoe is really good and it's the shoe that I first went for when I first started trail running I started in this shoe um, and it's and it stood the test of time really they have made some changes so I'm just gonna go um, on about the the change the changes a little bit as well um, Bram Van Diemen wants to know about the breathability of the upper which we will get on to um, and Alex de Hotot, excellent name, says not sure how much the how much durability the graphene has actually added. Perhaps it made them a bit more brittle. Ah, oh, okay. Maybe possibly. I need to try these for a lot longer. I'm actually going to send these to a friend of mine who's just won the Lancashire Fell Running Championships, and she goes out all the time in the Lake District and around Lancashire. So I'm going to be sending them to her, and she's going to be testing them out for me. Um, so because at the moment I'm uh, wearing a lot higher uh, drop shoe, so um, I'm going to send them to her to test out for um, more of a long-term test. But I'm just going to show you a couple of bits more on this um, Innovate Rock Light 275 because of how it differs to the old style of shoe. So um, you can see quite clearly there, and I'll put a picture up as well, um, compared to old shoe. Okay, so the lacing is a very different on the new shoe compared to the old shoe. So the old shoe had that so sort of semi-skinny style of lacing that I just wish that n no one ever did because it's sort of... It's really hard to undo the knot if you've got cold hands and um, there's no real reason for a weight saving in that area. Laces aren't that heavy, so just give me a chunky lace, everyone. Um, that's just my thoughts anyway. Um, might, might not be any, everyone that thinks like that, but that's just what I think anyway. So the laces... Um, you can see that this new lace is a really round, it's a round lace compared to the old lace which was 
it was skinny but it was a flat lace like so and um, it's, so to my mind that's harder to lace up because um, it's also running through these little um, other bits of rope here as well these are little bits of rope just here and so to my mind that's actually a bit harder to lace up because when you pull these through the laces they sort of stick the, on this one they stick in place and so you pull them they kind of stick and you pull them you kind of stick in this one you pull them you've got to put one finger down to make them stick and then pull them and stick and then pull them and stick and that is a little bit annoying and I also find that the round laces and Carol's just coming in here as well and saying exactly what I was going to say um the laces a round lace is easier to come undone than a flat lace I don't know why it just is easier so so to my mind I didn't think the laces needed changing apart from maybe being a bit thicker like for example in this uh, raid light shoe there's the option to put laces in and, and I, I really like that style of lace because um, it's really fat and it you can tie it down and really scrunch it tight and it just doesn't come undone so that's just one tiny gripe about the new lacing on the shoe um, everything else seems to have improved apart from one more thing which is the tongue and I, I couldn't quite get the tongue entirely comfy. Like if you look at the tongue on the old one, um, let me just show you inside here. It sort of, it folds all the way around. It's really big as tongues go. But this one here, um, oh, it's a bit dark. You can't really see. Um, but it's it's just skinnier and it's it sort of moves away. So the gusset on the tongue doesn't start until all the way back here. So you sort of, you can get um, these moments where like the gusset doesn't start down far with this one. This tongue's really squishy and this tongue is a little bit sparse. Um, and there's, when you do it up, there's just moments where you can sort of get a bit of lack of coverage from the tongue. And I just feel like I just wanted a little bit more a little bit more tongue just in this area here where it gets a bit um where it gets sort of darker just there i just feel like i wanted a bit more surface area to the tongue um that was just me though i don't know what everyone else has found um uh, james frost is saying the new shoe looks like it goes to more of a point than the old how is the toe box room so the toe box room yeah that's a that's a really good point i found the toe box room was massive in these but it also this shoe is kind of half size too big so do bear that in mind but let's just hold them up together um obviously the um other shoe has been worn a lot more so do you have to take that into account and also it's also oh it's the wrong size here let's get the right shoe it's also it's also my husband's shoe so it's a size eight rather than a size six so that will be why it looks bigger as well so we can't really compare but like from from the picture just here they do look like they are really similar toe box shape um and to me they they do seem really similar to the old ones like i'm not being my little toe isn't being pushed in um these would have been really good on the kate rath ultra actually because i needed a bigger shoe i should have took a bigger shoe on that race um but yeah, and then the uppers are really breathable. So the moment that any water um, drops onto these or you go through wet grass or you step in a puddle, it will go in, but it also goes out again. So these shoes are really breathable and I've been running in these and if you wear like a good sports sock, like I really like Bridgedale socks or a thousand mile socks, um, if you wear a good sports sock with these, you can find that if you, um, uh, if your run uh, becomes a bit drier, um, then by the end of the run, you'll have dry, well, dry-ish feet. They'll be sweaty, but dry-ish feet by the end of the run wearing a shoe like this. So the uppers are really breathable. And they, they do feel like they're flexible as well. They feel like they're a bit more flexible um, than the old style uppers. Um, so I'm holding out hope for these uh, to be um, a lot more durable because some people do, do say about Innovate Shoes that you can get a little bit of wear, especially around um, the high um, wear area of the upper there. Um, so um, Brad, Bram Van Diemen saying that round laces have less surface area to grip than flat laces. And yeah, I totally agree. I'm not, I'm not sure why the change in laces happened there. So yes, I would say that um, these shoes are really good for first time trail runners. But 
if I was given the choice between the old style and the new style, um, I, I wouldn't choose the round laces um, and I wouldn't choose the little loops for the laces either because just because they're a bit more faffy to get them undone and I mean done up um, tightly. Um, and I also um, would uh, choose the old style tongue because it's just, I just feel like it gave a little bit more comfort um, than the new one. Um, but that said, with a little bit of faffing around, you can make the shoe really, really comfy. Um, and it's super light at 263 gram for one shoe. And it's, um, oh, that's a really good question coming in from Bran Van Diemen there. What kind of distances would you recommend these shoes for? Um, I would run anything in these. Um, probably, yeah, I mean, I would run, like, looking back, I would do something like... I would do something like the Cape Wrath Ultra in these. So you could do a multi-day race of like averaging 30 miles a day. I would do a 50 miler in these. I would do a 100 miler in these. I think the distance isn't the thing. I think the thing is the terrain. And if you're going to be doing a hundred, well, um, 10 miles um, or even 30 miles over loads of bogs, then go for the mud claw type, really football study type design. And if you're going for a lot of mixed terrain, then definitely go for this, this type of grip. This is a really, really good all-rounder I would just give it 10 out of 10 for all-roundness definitely um, so uh, this is fantastic um, so Guy Greatrex is just joining us hello to Guy um, and everyone's saying hi that's bad it's really nice to have a little community of everyone here um, I'm just gonna open the window because it's getting boiling in here it's a really hot day here today so I'm just gonna open the window so I've got studio lights in here so that you can sort of see the shoes a bit better and and they're absolutely boiling so <laughs> so yeah I'm getting really warm okay so that should sort out that should sort out the red face a little bit so um fantastic so Claire Carol J just to re just to do some final comments on the innovate um to rock like 275 Carol J is also saying she agrees on the breathability and drying after the wet and boggy bits um she tried her Saucony Peregrine eights on the same terrain and they were sopping for hours in comparison so yeah that's one of the great things about an innovate shoe is it dries really quickly um so yeah I really like these I would I would wear them really really often um but at the moment I've got a plantar fashion problem so I'm, I'm having to wear shoes I'm having to wear more often shoes with a, a lot bigger stack in the heel just for the moment so I'm gonna send these elsewhere to get tested long term because I really want to know how long this grip lasts for I was trying to persuade somebody on the fell running um, Facebook group that they should wear one of the new ones with the graphene grip and then one of the old ones with no graphene grip um, but they said that they might run around in circles so they didn't want to try that sadly I did try for a more scientific test um, maybe I should try an old one a new one but I don't have the old pair <laughs> they probably won't send me the old pair now um but anyway um so alex de Hotot says he agrees on the wear um two last pairs of innovate trail talons both wore through on the upper just where the toes bend yeah so that's that's a, a real big wear area just here on any shoe and um i think um innovate They've put some reinforcement here on the 275. So there's a slightly different shinier colored black there um, on the side. So that's a slight bit of reinforcement there where the shoe bends. So we'll see how this one holds out. And um, I'm gonna be sending them to my tester up in the Lake District. Right, okay, so we've done fit, grip, the drop is eight millimeters, so that's good for most people. If you're coming to trail running from, say, a 12 mil or a 10 mil kind of stacked trainer, then these shoes should be all right for you. You shouldn't have to do too much work in transitioning down to eight mil drop shoe. Um, um, and the weight is good, it's really light, the uppers are really quick drying, we'll see how long they last, and the lacing, um, I'm not sure on the lacing compared to the old shoe, but overall, really good shoe. I would give this shoe probably eight and a half out of ten, and that's only because of the lacing, and I'm really fussy on that, so probably most people give it a nine. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, uh, Guy Greatrex is saying that he finds that his rock lights get give him a foot cramp when he goes over really hard rock. Ah, that 
that's interesting. That might you might need to do some more foot exercises. I've got some physio exercises which um, you do this towel grabbing thing. I think I've mentioned it in some of my Q and A's. And you you put a towel on the floor and you pretend this is my foot and there's a towel and you sort of grab the ends of the towel with your toes and you drag it towards you and then you spread the towel out and then you do it again and that can strengthen up the foot because the thing is with these is that they promote a natural sort of barefoot running motion so they rely on your foot to do most of the work they're not going to kind of carry it and support it like a, a road shoe would so that's why your feet have to be a little bit stronger to wear shoes like this than they would to wear a normal road trainer hope that makes sense fantastic um guy also says he's done 200 miles in his old rock lights and still going strong that's really good that's really good to know it'd be really handy if um like you know on strava there's that thing where you can put in the shoes that you've wear, wear worn um i need to find out how to update it because currently it's telling me that i'm wearing these all the time and i'm not um so i've been trying to write it in the actual text so that you can all see what shoes i'm wearing and what distance i'm covering in them but it would be really handy if if loads more people could do that and then we could sort of get this overall feel of how long most shoes on average lasted for right okay guys gonna give that a go that's fantastic great okay well that is fantastic so now I'm gonna move on to the next shoe um, if you think of any other questions about the innovate shoe then just let me know as we continue but thanks for all your great great questions so far it's really cool and um, doing these shoes shoe reviews with your questions coming in because I've got this list of things that I need to cover here but I don't always um, uh, remember so right so the next one is the Salomon speed cross five so this is it retails for 120 pounds um, there's a Gore-Tex version as well that retails for 140 pounds um, I found it online um, on Amazon I found it for 110 pounds and then you can get the old version which is the four which is this one here um, you can get the old version for more like 80 pounds um, so that's the price bracket that we're looking at here for the Salomon speed cross five so it's a bit heavier than the innovate shoe um, it's of 285 grams per shoe, um, so it's coming up as 570 grams in total for the pair. So that's a good nearly 50 grams, 46 grams more overall than the Innovate Rocklight 275. So you don't really, you don't really feel it. I mean, if this shoe is more comfortable for you than the Innovate uh, 275, then that kind of weight difference doesn't really matter but if you're um a true like you know you want to get some amazing time you want to hone everything off your um everything off your um your everything then uh, these shoes are not the right ones for that so um so the uh, that's the weight the drop on these uh, as you can see this well it looks like there's quite a chunky heel actually it, it goes down to more like there it's just the color um but the heel uh, to toe drop on these is 10 mil um that's why i have tried to that's why i'm using these quite a lot recently just because of my plantar fasciitis issue it's really frustrating but it just basically means that unless i wear some quite high heeled trail shoes it starts to come back again so i've been wearing these quite a lot recently as you can see by the mud so the grip on these is great um i'm just going to put a picture up of them compared to the old grip um so, so that you can see how the grip has changed in this new version from the five to the four so the four's on the top and it's blue um and you can i'll, I'll show you a side picture of it actually as well because um it has really really worn i've worn the blue ones the um the number fours i've worn them for ages i've worn them for like everything like gardening DIY as well um, but you can see the purple ones on the bottom and the new ones they're the fives they've moved the cleats around slightly they've they've basically they've put less cleats on and the cleats that are there they've made bigger so um, I've been running in both of them and I can't I can't really notice the difference between the cleats um, what I did notice was the fact that I've worn down the old cleats um, <laughs> And, um, and the new one. So if you can see there on the outside of the sole, um, you can see that I've worn them down um, quite a lot. So I'm ready to go again with the new ones. So that's, so that's both of them there. So these, so they're a bit heavier and they're 10 mil drop. And the grip, the grip is awesome. The grip is 
awesome, but it's not as good on slippery wet rock as the Innovate Grip is. That's what I found. I just find that that's like the difference between Salomon and Innovate is that um, Innovate shoes are much grippier when it comes to sort of slippery, wet, rocky, that kind of terrain. Um, but these are amazing in mud. Uh, they're a little bit more aggressive than the other two shoes that I'm testing here tonight, and um, they're they're very good. They're very good at in mud. They're a bit more aggressive than the than these ones. Um, the other thing is, they also are quite good on road. But if you wear them loads on the road, that like they're still cushioned enough for road running and mixed terrain. But if you wear them loads on on a road, you'll just wear them down, so they just won't be as aggressive as cleats. So um, I'd use these definitely for trail runs. Like when it's hard packed, you know, like this Easter, it's been really really hot. I would I would honestly I'd run trails in road shoes because you don't need the extra grip. You only need the extra grip when it's going to be muddy. So if the trails are hard packed and if they're they're not muddy at all, then you just run around in whatever trainers that you prefer to wear for road. Um, that's what I do anyway. Um, so yeah, the drop on these ones is 10. Um, the weight is a bit more. Um, the uppers um, are interesting. Um, this shoe, is basically, it really feels like it's really snug. Your foot goes in and it's got this it has got this orthotics liner, so you, you really get um, a bit more arch support with this shoe. The difference between putting this shoe on and putting the Innovate shoe on is incredible because this shoe really, really kind of snuggles your foot. It kind of, it just feels like it encloses your foot. Whereas the Innovate one, there's plenty of room for your foot to just do whatever it likes. So if you like a natural feel, um, if you if you like a natural feel, then the Innovate is great. If you like a bit more of a support, bit more like a road shoe, then the Salomon is is good, um, good for that feeling. The only thing about the Salomons that I definitely find, and I, I know that a couple of other people have found this, but not many that I've heard of, is that because they've got this additional support and a support around the arch especially, it actually rubs my arch after about six miles or to an hour of running. So the way that I've solved that is to wear a double layer sock. So I got these socks from a thousand mile socks and um, I'll have to put a link in the description below actually. Um, and that means that they're a double layer sock and they the, that means that they rub, um, they rub against the double layer of the sock rather than my skin rubbing against the sock and the shoe. So that's how I've solved these and that's how I can run for miles and miles and miles in these now because of the um, uh, because of wearing double air socks. The other thing that I just wanted to mention on this shoe um, and it's also a question from John Gardner one of my patrons as well. Um, he he asked, what about, um, is there going to be a wide fit to this shoe? Because you can see quite clearly that it is um, a lot slimmer of the toe box. The toe box is tons slimmer on this shoe than the Innovate shoe. So, so yes, this toe, I, I would love this shoe if it had a slightly wider toe box. Um, that would be really, really good. Now in the four, they did do a wide fit version, um, but I have emailed the PR people at Salomon this evening and they managed to come back to me just before I went live and they said that there isn't currently a live version of the Speedcross 5, but there will be coming out for autumn, winter 2019. So around sort of September time, there should be a wide version of this toe box in this uh, Speedcross 5. Um, the other thing to mention here is the, the speedy lacing um, and this sort of like a uh, bit of a uh, mesh uh, covering the um, the tongue here. So the tongue um, feels it's really substantial. It's really wide. Um, it really um, fits really snugly around your foot. Um, there have been people who have asked me about quick lacing and, and is it any good? And most people love quick lacing like loads of people wear this shoe loads of people love the shoe loads of people love the quick lacing which is essentially this really thin sort of cheese wire style lacing that you um you just pull in and then you pull it tight and you pull that bit down there and then you tuck you tuck the the remains under this mesh thing in the um in the tongue here so I don't really like quick lacing. I can't, I find that I've got a really low volume foot, so I find that if I pull it in tight at the bottom, by the time you've got to the top, it's just sort of eased itself out again. There's no, there's no resistance in these runners here um, to keep the lace in place. So you can't have different 
strengths of tension all the way up the foot. So that's the personal reason why I don't like it. People with higher volume foot, um, feet and different shaped feet, they absolutely swear by it. They love it. So it's totally personal preference. And in the next shoe, we'll see... Um, you can tell the difference immediately and the next shoe gives you both options so that's really interesting so I'm just I've been aware that I've just been like chatting away about that shoe for ages now so I'm just going to look and see if there's any questions um so um da -ba -da -ba -da. Um, yeah, Tim Croft is saying you can't get stability road shoes on trails or to your gates. Um, so you, you can use stability road shoes on trails if you want to, if they're dry enough. Um, I know a lot of people from my running club um, do. Um, it's hard to alter your gait. It really is. It's it's difficult. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of training. And if you're finding that you're uninjured whilst wearing a stability shoe, then my advice would be to stick with it and to keep using it um, rather than trying to do something else. Um, you ca can... Oh, d maybe... Does the question mean can't stability r road shoes on trails alter your gait? Um, basically, your foot is... Uh, a very clever thing and um, if you wear stability shoes on trails um, yeah it will just keep your foot stable um, and it will your foot will respond fine to the trails or whatever whatever it whatever it brings you if you're used to running in those stability shoes on trails then you can still use them um, on roads sorry you can still use them on trails um, that that is what I think um, then the I'm uh, just looking back for some questions that uh, Sean says uh, still looking tight around the toes like the fours yes they are they are quite snug around the toes and yep there's a wide version in the fours and it will, the wide version for these ones will come out next winter so look out for those I'm definitely going to be ordering a pair of those because they're always quite tight that's one thing I forgot to mention actually the fit of these shoes um I would I always go half a size bigger on these shoes so this is actually a 6.5 so I'm a size 6 and I would go for a 6.5 in these I should have said that right at the beginning so innovates go a size a half a size smaller Salomon's always goes half a size bigger okay so then um, Carol also said the fours were very tight on on toes so many blisters for anything over 10 miles um, Niall Ainsworth said, I've never even considered running socks. Would a sock review video be worthwhile? Yes, I've done some sock review videos. Um, uh, I was doing a project with a thousand mile socks just recently. So if you uh, Google while ginger running socks, then uh, something will come up related to me and socks. So give that a go, Neil. Niall, sorry. Um, then Sean Lockhart said, um, his Sonic Pros have, have ample room, same size as Speedcross. Um, John Gardner, um, good points, agrees with the snug fit and the high arch. Yep, yeah, they do have a high arch. And thanks for checking on the wide widths, he says. Fantastic. Just doing my job. Okay, yeah, so this is great. So Sean has said he loves the quick lace. So, like, there's loads of love for the quick lacing system. It really is a great system. And these are the first pair of shoes that I just slip on to, like, go to the compost bin and go out into the garden and because they're so easy to just get on. Um, but I can't get on with them for actual running. Um, okay, uh, Brown Van Diemen's has on for his road shoes and he loves them. Ah, yes, on. Yeah, interesting. I've, um, I've used one that those as well. Um, fantastic. Okay, um, Stephen Mackey says he likes the salmon shoes for the snuggles and support and the wide toe box, the wide toe box for a size 12. Um, he likes the innovates for the flatness and grip, but it lacks the support that he looks for. Um, Alex Dehutza asks him if he's tried Ciccone. I tried, I tried Ciccone um, one time. Yeah, I did. But I think that they rubbed on my heel in a funny way. So it's just like I'm going to try and rate these shoes at the end of the broadcast. But um, it's just so hard because the first thing that you need to look for in a shoe is whether it fits your foot or not. And, and there's a massive difference between the Salomon shoes and the Innovate shoes. Like this one's really wide and sort of flattish and your foot can do what it likes. This one, your foot feels super cocooned and um, really snug and the toe box is really narrow and you feel like a bit like you're running on a high heel because of the big heel stack. These ones, you feel like even though it's 
only two millimeters difference, it does feel a bit like you're sort of falling backwards when you put these on compared to these these high heels. So um, Brad Van Diemen says that his preferred shoes are still the La Sportiva Akasha. Oh yes, I wore a pair of those when I was doing that Lecky Poles film um, because La Sportiva was there as well and I wore them and they had quite a high drop and they had quite a lot of grip and quite a lot of cushioning. They were a really good sort of balance between you want to get in, out into the mountains and you need some good grip and you need a little bit of support around the, sh um, the sole area but you don't want to be, um, you don't want to be too uncushioned um, because you're coming from a, like a road running background or you you know you just like a bit more cushioning so those were a really good balance I found of that um okay so we're going to start on the final shoe review now it's the I'm quite excited about this one because I haven't actually worn a raid light shoe before so this is the raid light revolutive um so it's their new shoe and um I've just, yeah, I haven't run as far as the others in it because it was sent later, but I just thought I'd add it on at the end and I might do another review of these later on. Um, but I've got this in a size six. I probably, if I was buying these in a shop, I would look to try on the size, the half size bigger because like the Salomons, my toe is a little bit towards the end there. So if you're looking to buy a red light shoe, then consider going a half size bigger. Um, these cost 135 pounds. Um, I saw them on Amazon, really strangely, for £162, which is odd, usually it's cheaper on Amazon, and I've seen them elsewhere online for £105, so this is the ballpark sort of figure for this shoe, it's, it's still like over the £100 mark for this shoe. They're really, really light, so they're the lightest of the shoes on test here today. Um, they're they're the same size as the Innovate, but they feel smaller. So they are the lightest, but I would need a half size bigger. So it kind of makes them on a par with the Innovate Rock Light in the end. So these are 254 grams each. So for a pair, that makes it 508 grams. Um, the drop is six millimeters. So it's the lowest drop of, of all of the shoes here today. Um, and that can, you just, when you start getting like below eight mil, you just want to be a little bit careful transitioning because um, the lower the drop, basically, the more strain it puts on your Achilles and your calf muscles. And um, so uh, basically, if you do too much too soon, you can put a strain on them and you can actually lead to an injury. So that's basically how I got my injury. I, I went to zero drop like straight away and I was an absolute idiot. So don't do that. Um, so it, you just transition gradually over a period of weeks, building up the mileage in a, in a lower drop shoe. Um, so Demon Van, uh, Bram Van Diemen says um, he's got the Revolutive and the Responsive Ultra. Um, fantastic. And Carol J, is, this is a really good point here, Carol J is saying, um, I wish you could take all the features from the different shoes that you like and have a custom one. There's never just one that does it all. I know, I know. I've said that in previous reviews as well. I would really love to just have a custom shoe made. I think everybody needs a custom shoe made because everybody's got different, like slightly different foot shapes. I'd love it um, uh, if they had like a more, a shoe which was much more triangular in shape, like the Ultras, but I can't cope with the zero drop of the Ultras. So, oh. Uh, Oh, this is, it just goes on and on. So I'll continue with the review of the Revolutive. So Demon, um, Brand Van Diemen is saying that he tried the Revolutive yesterday during hill repeat with hard pack travel, rocky and grass trails. Yeah, so I'm liking the shoe. So I took it out today um, and the fit is, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's quite as comfy as the Salomon shoe straight from the box. It feels a little bit boxy. It's like, um, it's it's a funny shoe. It's got a sort of like this seamless edge to it there. And then it's got this sort of gaiter inside, which provides a bit of padding um, all the way around. And so it's different to all the other shoes that I've, I've seen really. Um, and but the great thing about the shoe is that you can choose between quick lacing or normal lacing. So I've got one quick lace and, and one normal lace and I took them out today just to see how the difference was and for me this lacing is definitely better. This lacing just feels like it's cheese wiring into me and it's, it's just not as comfy. It just really isn't so and 
I just I can't get the fit right down to the bottom towards my toes of my shoes. I, the, the bit here, I, I like to get this fit quite tight in. Whereas with this, you can't achieve the same effect. And if you do, it sort of cheese wires you. So um, let's just um, let's just go uh, on the feel. So the feel is a little bit um, not quite as comfy straight from the box as something like an Innovate or a Salomon shoe, um, but with a little bit of wear, uh, they are very comfy. Um, they just feel a little bit stiffer on top, like a little bit more boxy. Um, the uh, lacing I've just covered, it's fantastic how you can have either or. I did have to chop the laces out, which disturbed me a little bit, because I thought, oh no, I'm, I'm ruining them. So I actually chopped the laces out, the quick release laces. I chopped them down at the bottom here, because I thought if I do change my mind, or if I want to send these to somebody who, um, who wants to use the quick lacing instead, I can just tie them together down the bottom here, and then this bit's not affected at all. So that's how I dealt with that problem. But I will be chopping these out as well and putting putting the lacing in. So the lacing is good. I can get a nice a nice fit with these, and they are a little bit too small. I've covered that. Probably go for a half size smaller. Um, oh, okay. This is really good information here. Bram Van Diemen is a mine of information here. Um, he's heard from other friends that they take a little while to break in because they're harder outside. But the neoprene sock is quite comfy. Yes, the neoprene sock is comfy. So it is really comfy. This neoprene sock, and I was thinking, oh, that might be quite good as like a, a debris gator or something like that. But actually, it it doesn't sort of clamp around your ankle in the right way to be a very effective gator. Um, I suppose it's more effective than just a, the normal shoe, but I just think that if, if you want to go for a gaiter, you need it to be a little bit higher and then a little bit more tight and then the opportunity to sort of pull it in as well. Like you need a little bit of a draw cord. So, um, but it's, it's nice as a, it's nice as a, as a, um, it's, it feels nice as, as a, as a little neoprene gaiter. It's comfortable. Um, this eyelet here was, um, when I used it with the actual laces, that was sort of, sort of digging in a little bit so I think I need a little bit of time to get used to these shoes and, and adjust them um, but basically I really enjoyed wearing them. Um, the grip uh, is not as aggressive as the um, Salomon shoe um, or the Innovate shoe so this shoe is still good for a mixture of terrains but less uh, less of the mud and more of the um, more of the just usual mixture of like grassy, rocky, a um, uh, little bit muddy, um, a few puddles here and there. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't use these for like yeah yeah I would I would go full on mountain running in these. You could it would cope it would cope. Yeah, it's a good grip. It's a good grip. It's just not quite as deep as the salmon grip and the innovate grip. So let's just compare them there. So it's just not quite as deep as the Salomon one. That's all. Still very adequate and not quite as as clingy to rock. There's not quite as many grips there as the Innovate one. Um, but still good. Um, Sean uh, Lockhart says, have they got a pocket to tuck the quick lace in? So the quick lace goes in this bit here. Um, and yeah, so my foot being a quite a low volume foot, um, I had mine, let me just put it in like that, I had mine quite tightly in, so I had mine kind of in there, so I got all of this to play with, which is quite a lot. So then you tuck it under here, which is the elastic bit here, you tuck it under, and you can sort of tuck it under so that it, it hooks with its little hook bit there. Um, but I just ended up just putting it like this a few times around like in here around it But you can sort of use this um, it's sort of like a this bit is sort of like a flexible hook bit you can sort of use that to hook it in like so So yeah, you can hook it into there but it's a bit more of a faff than just putting it into the cuff like you do on the Salomon shoe. So the Salomon one, you just pull them tight and then you simply pull the Salomon logo here and flip it up into the pocket and then pop this hard bit here up into here. And you do get a little bit of lace coming out like that but I mean, you would on a normal shoe as well. Now you can tuck that all in as well, but it just takes longer. So 
so I don't usually bother with that unless I'm going to go through a load of brambles or something. Um, so let's read a few questions about these raid lights. Um, the drop was 6mm, the weight was very light, they are very light, um, the uppers and the lacing. Yeah, the, the neoprene just here, it, it's not very thick, so this does tend to cheese wire. These laces, however, are really, really comfy, so I like those a lot. And also a nice little touch down here, the black part going across here, that is for gaiters to hook onto. So that's a little hook. How do I show that? Yeah, that's a little hook for gaiters just there. So there you go. Um, yeah, so let's just read out a few comments about these raid light shoes then. Right, where were we? Um, uh, uh, uh. Ah, Alex de Hotot says the tongueless design looks good. Yeah, there is a knack to getting these shoes on your feet though because the hole, the opening is um, a little bit narrow. You have to make sure that the uh, laces are fully undone and then what I've been doing is, is putting the foot in um, whilst this is sort of bent over and then using my thumb to sort of pull this bit out. That It was a bit hard to start with but and, but there is a knack so you get used to that. Um, it, is a, it's nice, it is nice to have no tongue actually. It doesn't slip to the side or anything like the um, Innovate one was doing so that's good. Um, have yeah, quick lace pocket. We've done that. Um, Bram Van Diemen said the speed lacing wasn't working quite well for him during his run, and he had to retighten them. So the PR guy at Raid Light did actually email me and tell me that the speed lacing they've been having a few problems with it, and um, that they're going to update it and they're going to make it better. So that sounds like you may have been ha experiencing the problems that he was trying to tell me about. But yeah, if you put these in, then you won't have any speed quick quick lock lacing problems at all. Um, Guy Raytrek says, what shoes did I wear on my race last week? Any of these three? No, I actually wore a pair of Columbia shoes that I've had in my cupboard for ages. And I got them out because they they just basically, they look like road trainers. And basically, I, I wore out my Brooks Adrenalines, which I had been wearing. I never got injured in. I wore them out completely. I've been emailing Brooks and emailing Brooks, and they won't send me a pair. <laughs> and a new pair is going to cost like 140 quid. So I've gone through my shoe cupboard, and I've gone, what's got a thick enough sole that I can wear it with my plantar fasciitis right now and uh, the Columbia ones are the ones that I've chosen so um, I'll have to put a photo on Instagram or something like that um, and share everybody what I'm wearing at the moment um, but yes they are they're basically um, a little bit like road shoes but with a little bit more grip so they've, they've got not quite as much grip as this um, but I didn't need it at the weekend because it was it was so, um, it was, it's been so dry here lately that you could honestly just run in the woods, run on trails in road shoes, and it's fine. So, Masood Kalali, hello Masood, he's saying, any 4 mil drop shoes with wide toe box that anyone can recommend? Oh, that rings a bell. I think in my ultra, yes, I know some shoes with a 5 drop, a 5 mil drop with a wide toe box. If you, Masood, if you um, Google if you just look at my ultra review from a, uh, about a month ago, it's the ultra superior 4.0 review. Um, I mention some other shoes which have a wide toe box like the ultra, but they're five millimeter drop. I can't quite remember what the brand name is, um, but um, I'll uh, I'll type me a question on Patreon and I'll I'll research that one and I'll get back to you because I know that there is a shoe with a wide toe box that's it's five mil drop. So um, hopefully that should help you out. So, uh, Sally Gilson has been running mainly in Salomons. Excellent. Uh, oh, brought speed cross. They don't just they just don't feel the same. Bought the Ultra Pros, but causing a hot spot on the inner foot. Ah, if you've got any hot spots um, inside the shoe, especially with a Salomon shoe, I get I get hot spots in Salomon shoes. Do try a pair of double layer socks because you might find that that solves your problem of um, of the hot spots in the shoe. Just just give that a go. Um, so Brown Van Diemen thinks that these ones are made for speed and really precise running and they lack a bit of stability. Um, yeah, they're definitely not as stable a shoe as the Salomons. Like if you run in this, you just, you feel like you've got a tank on your foot. These ones leave you a little bit more up to your own devices. It just depends what kind of running you want to do. Um, uh, and on, on the bottom is also a little loop that you can tuck them through. 
Oh yes, 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 the gator thing. So you could get the quick lacing. Um, so you could get the quick lace and you could tuck it through the um, the elastic bit there and then you could also tuck it through the bottom loop there which you can use for gaiters as well. That's a good point, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, but not as tidy as Salomon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Sally Gilson saying she's got a pair of Scots that are comfy and great in mud. So yeah, I've had a pair of the, the Scott Killer Balloons before and the Scott Super Tracks as well. I love the Super Tracks. They had that radial sole. I, I really love it. It was like one of the best, grippiest shoes I've ever worn. It, I love it. It's amazing. But they give me the most horrendous blisters at the arch in the same way that the Salomons do. Um, so I have to wear a double layer sock with those as well and, and re-wear them again. But they they were um, they were amazing. But they savaged my Achille my uh, not my Achilles my my arch. They really savaged it. It's it's really strange how some shoes just really like hit that arch area and some just don't. So it's just so important to go to shops and to try shoes on. Um, I think because otherwise you're just not going to get the right shoe for you. And um, even though I'm a shoe tester and I've tested millions of shoes in my time, I still haven't found the perfect shoe. So. Um, the perfect shoe for me, I think, would be the Brooks Adrenalines with slightly less cushioning and a bit more grip. So um, if they could just make me that, then that would be lovely of them. Thank you, Brooks, if you're listening. Um, okay. Um, uh, Sean says, I'm supposed to roll the lace around the plastic bit and then pop it in the pocket with no excess showing. Oh, is that what the plastic bit's for? Oh, my God, all my life I've been doing things wrong. Okay, so I'm supposed to pop pop that plastic bit up here and then you're supposed to roll the lace around this plastic bit like this and then pop it all up there. I can see how that would work. Yep. Oh, learn something every day, so that's gone up there now. <laughs> fantastic. That's good. Um, fantastic. Let's see, any more questions? Oh my goodness, I've been talking for nearly an hour now. I should probably end the broadcast. <laughs> so, um, Masood Kalali saying the Brooks Pure Cadence is good. They feel tight. So far, two, two toenails have fallen. Oh my goodness. It's been a while since I've lost a toenail. I'm, I'm pretty glad about that. Um, Sally Gilson saying, uh, thanks for the top tip currently using gingies. I really like the idea of gingies. Everyone always says to me, oh, you get blisters on the, in your toes. I get these really bad blisters here and here on my toes. They say, oh, you've got blisters on your toes. Wear in gingies. But I can't wear in gingies because each little bit of the sock, because there's a bit of glove sock around each toe, it basically makes your feet do that in a shoe, which is already trying to do that to your feet. So unless I was wearing ultras, I don't think I could wear an in gingy sock. Um, but I have got some and I will try them in different shoes but if you're being squished in a pair of shoes like this then you can't you don't want your feet any further apart with sockage anyway that's just my thoughts on the matter um, uh, oh yes Bram Van Diemen is saying <laughs> it's not a shameless plug this is actually really useful I just I totally recommend everybody I would love it if you all had blogs and all wrote stuff about your shoes I think it's so important to have so much information about the shoes out there um, uh, Bram is saying, sorry for the shameless plug, I hope you don't mind, I don't mind at all, I'll post, uh, he's going to post his review for The Revolutive next week on his own channel, so everybody take a look at Bram's review of The Revolutive shoe um, on his channel, because I mean, some people can really love a shoe, some people can really not get on with a shoe, but you've really got to try, you've got to, you've got to kiss a few frogs when it comes to shoes, I think, you've got to, you've got to get with the bad shoes and, uh, and then slowly you'll work out which one is good for you. But I hope that that review has been, um, I I hope that that review has been helpful for you. Um, oh, Sally Gilson is saying that it has, because she, I may have just sold her salmon and in gingy problem. Yeah, that, that might be exactly it. Um, uh, but then Alex de, Hot, uh, Alex de Hotart is saying that in gingy's completely solved his blister problems. And Guy is saying he'll have a look too. Um, Brilliant. Well, I hope that this year review has been helpful. So we had the Innovate Rock Light 275, we had the Salomon Speed Cross 5, wide version out in the fall, and then we had the Raid Light Responsive. So I will be wearing these shoes or sending them to other people with my shoe size. Let me know if you're my shoe size, just in case you can be a tester. Um, so I'll be send, I'll be testing these shoes on a more long term basis. So keep checking back to Wild Ginger Running um, to find out how the shoes have got on. And if you want to be in a chance, in with a chance to win these three running packs from uh, from Orange Mud, remember the twelve liter one. 
Oh, the four litre one. And the Hydra Barrel, two litre water carrying one. If you want them in this hat that's been on my head, how about that? It's actually been on my head and you can win it. Wow. Um, you can win this hat. Uh, and also the Trail Running Festival with Salomon. This one. All up for grabs on at the end of the month. So I'm going to draw the prize at the end of the month and I am going to um, tell you who's won and then I will be launching the May competition as well. So I might do um, another live broadcast about that, like a separate one. I know the next live broadcast is Wednesday. I'm going to be testing the um, Salomon, oh, it's not the Salomon, the OM Phantom 12 pack. That's just come in. And with any stroke of luck, the Raid Light Responsive Packs might have come in as well by next Wednesday. So if they have, I'll be doing a joint review of those. So join me next time for those. Um, and also join me, keep watching out on the channel for news about the competition because I'll, I'll draw the winners of the competition at the end of the month. So stay tuned and uh, thank you so much for watching. It's been fabulous to have you here. If you're watching again, then type your comments in the uh, um, YouTube comments below and I will do my best to answer any questions that you have. So thank you very much um, for all your excellent comments and for watching this entire review of me rabbiting on for an hour about three different pairs of shoes. And um, I will see you all um, on the trails, watch my film um, about where I'm going to be this summer and join me at one of my events. It'd be absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. I'm going to go now. Uh, need to drink water and stop talking. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And I'll see you on the trails. <laughs>